From a shift in power at the Wisconsin Supreme Court to addressing declining enrollment at Green Bay schools. We know more about it than you do. The love is flowing for Packers quarterback Jordan Love in his first year as a starter. And we'll take you into the community to see how Fox 11 is making a difference. From how many racks were harvested during Deer Hunt 2023, to the stories that racked up the highest number of views on our website. It was an eventful year across our great state. Join us for the next half hour as we take a look back at 2023. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Melby. And I'm Mark Leland. Thank you for joining us for our 2023 A Year in Review special. And what a year it was. In 2023, the political landscape of Wisconsin was anything but unified. While Republicans entered the year with continued dominance in the legislature, voters tempered the GOP control, starting with ushering in another term for Democratic Governor Tony Evers. I, Tony Evers, swear that I will support. Tony Evers was sworn in for a second term on January 3rd at the Capitol in Madison. The November election had been a long fought battle against Trump supported Republican Tim Michaels. During his inauguration, Evers indicated his victory also marked voters rejecting the GOP attack on democracy. Wisconsin rejected a rhetoric born out of apathy and animosity towards our neighbor. And Wisconsin rejected a return to the bitter politics of resentment. By February, the reinstated 1849 abortion ban law drew voter attention in the state Supreme Court race, which led to a record turnout in the primary with more than 950,000 votes cast. Milwaukee Judge Janet Protasewicz soundly defeated former Justice Daniel Kelly in the April general election by making no promises but sharing her liberal personal views on the abortion issue. Yes. I believe in a woman's right to choose. I actually think the voters of this state should know what a candidate's values are. Protosewitz's victory gave the high court a liberal edge for the first time in 15 years. We did it! We the did spring it! election also saw Republicans in the state Senate gain a supermajority. Democrats blame legislative district maps drawn a decade earlier by Republicans for the lopsided representation in Madison. In August, as Protosewicz was being sworn in, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss threatened to impeach the liberal-leaning justice over her outspoken views on the legislative maps. A lawsuit over the maps likely will be decided by the high court. The maps that we have are fair. Uh, the process that we have is clearly one where we have the best candidates winning in districts. Wisconsin is the most uh, gerrymandered state in the country. Throughout the year, there would be no political unity for Wisconsin, with all signs indicating this purple state remains a key player heading into the presidential election in 2024. The Green Bay Area Public School District was under the microscope this year as it looks to make generational changes. It's looking to close buildings as it deals with declining enrollment and a budget deficit. Our Ben Krumholtz tells us what decisions were made in this Project Education report. Green Bay School District is projected to lose 12% of its enrollment over the next decade. Next school year, it also faced a budget deficit that once sat at $36 million. It's now down to two million after a year of tough decisions. It was clear maintaining the status quo and doing nothing is not an option. In May, after several months of work, a task force of 26 community members recommended to the school board it should close 12 buildings, including 11 schools. The process was met with harsh public criticism for a lack of diversity on the task force and poor communication with non-English speaking families. We know more about it than you do. Just as the school board started to act on the task force's recommendations, the district welcomed a new superintendent, Claude Tiller, who was previously an administrator at Detroit Public Schools. Everything will look and be better for the kids, guaranteed, or I wouldn't be sitting in this seat. Under Tiller's guidance, the school board first approved the closure of Weequiac Elementary School. This is a painful vote. It's, we are heading to making other votes like this, but this is the first one and none of us are taking any joy in it. The board has since approved closing Tank and Keller Elementary schools after this school year. It decided against the relocation of Leonardo da Vinci School for Gifted Learners and the district office building. 
That leaves seven schools that were recommended to close without decisions made yet on their futures. Our goals has always been to provide students with the best locations and the best schools that they can be at. The school board ended the year pondering a $150 million referendum for next April that included building a new elementary school here to house students from Kennedy, Keller and MacArthur. However, the district has decided it would be better to wait until next November. In Green Bay, Van Krumholz, Fox 11 News. From record inflation to fluctuating prices at the pump, 2023 took a financial toll on residents here in Northeast Wisconsin. Fox 11's Melissa McCready breaks it down in this money saving year in review. We started out 2023 paying significantly more for groceries and household items. The Consumer Price Index, a closely watched measure of inflation, had an annual gain of 6.4% in January. The national average price of gas started off the year at $3.21 a gallon, according to AAA. From there, the price at the pump fluctuated slightly until a few months ago when they spiked, hitting our peak of $3.88 mid-September. Since then, we've been on a decline, finally hitting the lowest level of the year this month. That drop in price helped slow inflation throughout 2023, but the struggle to hire employees continued. Businesses had to get creative. The city of Green Bay increased lifeguard pay to $18 an hour, and Green Bay Area Public Schools implemented a bonus program to fill dozens of open positions. A record number of Americans traveled in 2023, despite the increased costs. According to AAA, airline tickets were up 50% over the July 4th weekend compared to the previous year, yet airline travel was up 11% from last year and up 6% from 2019. Costs have since slowed. AAA reports that the average price for a round trip ticket to Orlando this holiday season is at $613, down from last year, and the average price to Las Vegas dropped nearly $200. Travel will wrap up 2023 on a high note with AAA estimating 115 million Americans to leave town for the holiday up 2% from last year. Our 2023 A Year in Review special is just getting started. From a rare bird in Green Bay to Fox 11's community outreach, there is plenty to look back on. But first, we take a look at some of the more serious and difficult stories that made headlines in Northeast Wisconsin. Twenty twenty three brought resolution to some high profile court cases and the arrest of a notorious author. It also brought a record number of visitors to the region, along with some tragedies too. Fox 11's Emily Matesic takes a look back at the news from twenty twenty three. More than a year after Taylor Shabiznis brutally murdered and dismembered Shad Therian, a man she called her friend, the now 26-year-old Green Bay woman was convicted at the end of July. A jury taking very little time to find her guilty of the 2022 murder, deciding Shabiznis was not insane when she committed the crime. Judge Thomas Walsh referring to the heinousness of her crime in September when he sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole. These actions are foreign to all of that, uh, to all that community um, and they shock the community beyond the ability to adequately express in words. They, they really do. While the Shabiznis case garnered a lot of national attention, a man with a national reputation for writing controversial books on bomb and drug manufacturing was arrested in Green Bay. For decades, Stephen Priestler, also known as Uncle Fester, lived on Green Bay's east side. Back in July, Green Bay police raided his home, eventually charging Priestler with multiple counts of manufacturing and possession of methamphetamine and other drugs. But it was the neighbors working together, working with the police, not getting frustrated and just giving up. That, I think, really made the difference here. 2023 brought healing for the victims of last year's Pulaski bonfire, while those who caused the incident are being held responsible. Three people, including two teens and the man who lived at the property where the incident took place, are being sued in civil cases by several of the victims. The two teens were also charged criminally, one juvenile being sentenced to community service, while the other, 18-year-old Sam Armstrong's case, is still working its way through the court system. This is not just another expansion. This is not just another announcement. But this is the project that is going to make or break our airport. 
Ottagami County officials announced a major expansion is coming to Appleton International Airport. The $66 million project will more than double the airport size, adding more gates, expanded restrooms and sensory areas. Travelers will be able to enjoy a new restaurant and bar in the concourse too. The expansion comes as a record number of people traveled in and out of ATW this year. EAA AirVenture, the world's largest aviation celebration, once again brought a record number of people to Northeast Wisconsin too. Unfortunately, four people were also killed in two aircraft crashes during the week-long event. One of the crashes was on the EAA grounds, while a second incident involved a plane crashing into Lake Winnebago. The NTSB is continuing to investigate both incidents. And that's your year in review. I'm Emily Matesic. From a less than typical Wisconsin winter to a mild summer of storms. Meteorologist Phil DeCastro takes a look back at this year's weather highlights, including an incredible show in the sky. But first, our Eric Peterson recaps the big catches of the year and takes a look at a rare bird that made quite the splash on social media. From sturgeon spearing to bird watching to buck hunting, 2023 was filled with people getting outdoors and enjoying more of what the area has to offer. Fox 11's Eric Peterson takes a look back at some of the highlights. Two weeks into the new year and open water could be found on Lake Winnebago in Oshkosh. A month later, conditions improved enough for UTVs to shuttle about half the number of sturgeon spears onto the ice for the season opener. On Lake Winnebago, spears took 1,120 sturgeon, ranking the campaign 25th out of 83 seasons. Jim Gishkowski took the season title with this 177.3 pound monster. Just amazing, I've never seen a fish that big. That's the biggest fish I've ever seen. In April, sturgeon returned to spawn at places along the Wolf River. But DNR sturgeon biologist Margaret Stadig says up and down weather conditions made it challenging for those involved. We were sampling in shorts on Saturday and I am sitting here snow in my face <laughs> this morning. Monday. And back in July, a rare sighting of a pink bird in the Green Bay area was not only a discovery for many to remember, but it also quickly turned into somewhat of a social media splash. The bird definitely sticks out in the lineup. It's pink like a flamingo, um, got that really distinct spoon shape on the end of its bill. Doesn't look like anything we have here. Audubon Great Lakes' Tom Presby says weather events likely blew this roseate spoonbill into the area. The pink bird attracted dozens of photographers on site and thousands more online. In the age of social media, a bird this rare and this charismatic looking has really gone viral. It's in tons and tons of Facebook groups and it's been picked up by a ton of different news outlets. Bird watcher Logan Lazé was the first to spot the spoonbill. I've been on cloud nine for the last couple days. It's been amazing seeing people from all over the state gathering together to see this bird. I mean, it's just been, it's like Christmas. And in November, fewer hunters bagged fewer deer than the year before during the nine day gun season. Experts say a lack of snow cover had an impact. Eric Peterson, Fox 11 News. Staying in the outdoors, the memorable weather moments of 2023 may be a little more under the radar than years past. But Mother Nature still had plenty to offer in the skies over the area, in some cases way above the skies. Fox 11's meteorologist Phil DeCastro brings us this look back. 2023 started off on a quiet note this past January. It was the sixth warmest January on record in Green Bay, and any snow that we got didn't stick around for long. But that changed in a hurry. February would end up the fifth snowiest one on record in Green Bay, and March the third snowiest. Back to back, they combined for the second snowiest February and March on record in Green Bay, with about four feet of snow falling to close out the winter. That included the unusual and unexpected winter storm Grant on March 25th. An extremely narrow but extremely intense band of snow parked over the Fox Valley for most of the morning and produced snowfall rates near six inches per hour. And for perspective, 
Our biggest storms rarely exceed two or three inches per hour. Grant left the Fox Valley bogged down with one to two feet of snow, while barely 10 miles away in spots like Shyocton, barely three inches fell. About a month later, another kind of unusual intensity created a spectacle in the skies overhead. It was the strongest geomagnetic storm in years that lit the night skies of April 23rd in glowing greens, reds, and purples of the northern lights. Usually confined to the northern horizon, the aurora borealis swept overhead of all of northeast Wisconsin that night. From there, though, things took a decidedly dingier turn. Smoke from relentless wildfires across Canada turned our skies gray for long periods of May and June and even into July. While it made for some spectacular sunrises and sunsets, it cut solar energy for some crops, and that slowed and stunted their growth even more after a slow start thanks to a bone-dry spring. Though summer is usually our severe storm season, this one was practically non-existent. An August severe storm that knocked down trees in parts of Manitowoc was just about the lone notable severe weather incident. On Halloween, an early season snowfall had trick-or-treaters covering up costumes with coats. A daily snowfall record of four and a half inches was set in Appleton, even if it didn't stick around for long. And as we close out 2023, our attention turns to what we can expect in 2024. And no matter what the weather might throw at us, we'll be watching for it all here at Fox 11. Meteorologist Phil DeCastro, Fox 11 News. Fox11online.com is on track to exceed 85 million page views in 2023. We'll tell you which stories received the most clicks, and we'll show you how Fox 11 gave back to Northeast Wisconsin in 2023. We posted thousands of stories to fox11online.com in 2023. Fox 11 Scott Hurley takes a look at the stories you were most interested in. Taking a look at the three most viewed stories of the year at fox11online.com, starting with number three. In his budget, Governor Tony Evers proposed making ignition interlock devices mandatory for anyone convicted of drunken driving. That story saw 102,808 page views. Coming in at number two, a day before winter storm Delilah hit in February, Fox 11 meteorologists were letting you know that the snow would pile up. Delilah ended up being the third biggest storm of the previous five years as measured by snow totals. That forecast received 120,073 page views. Our most viewed story of the year got the attention of families across Northeast Wisconsin. In April, Green Bay Parks officials decided to remove the Sea Dragon and Chairplane from Bay Beach Amusement Park. Overall, that story had 160,510 page views. Scan the QR code on your screen or head to fox11online.com slash year 2023 to see these full stories and the rest of the top 10 of 2023. Scott Hurley, Fox 11 News. Plenty of good takes place in our area each and every day. And at Fox 11, we are proud to play a small part in some of the events that are making a big difference. Let's take a look back. This past year, Fox 11 hosted three area food drives, one of them right in the parking lot of our station. Viewers lined up to drop off food and money for local food pantries. We've been out here since about 5.30 this morning, and just take a look behind me at what your viewers, the wonderful viewers of Fox 11, have done. It was a huge success, with hundreds of pounds of non-perishable items collected in Menasha, Green Bay, and Oshkosh. How many pieces did you cut the half into? Excellent teachers are just like gold. Look at your writing, you guys. It's so much better. Maybe that's fitting with the Fox 11 Golden Apple Awards. This year marked a milestone Hi there. as we celebrated 30 years of recognizing incredible instructors in the area. A permanent spot. Our reporters take viewers into the classrooms Here you go, sweet girl. to show off the creative and innovative ways that teachers are making a difference for students. They go from being scared little fourth graders to sixth graders that I'm sending off at the end of the year. And that's that's a really cool transformation. This year's gala took place inside the Lambeau Field Atrium. Mark and I hosted the elegant reception. It's great to see you guys out. In May, it's the graduating seniors' turn for the spotlight, specifically some of the brightest. <laughs> Fox 11 hosts the event called Best of the Class at Lambeau Field. It's all really fun and exciting. More than 300 students from 100 area high schools are represented dressed in their caps and gowns. It's like being in 
a classroom with like all Harvard kids. I think it's a really great way to celebrate the accomplishments of not only myself, but of my fellow classmates. Local leaders gave speeches of advice and encouragement. The students are then featured in short television segments, which air throughout the summer. This is uh, perhaps one of the most inspiring things that we do any time during the year. At Fox 11, it's our privilege to be involved, and we look forward to the events in the year to come. We thank you for watching the Fox 11 Year in Review special. You can rewatch any of our Year in Review stories on our website. Use the camera on your smartphone to scan the QR code on your screen. That will take you directly to the Year in Review section of the website. Well, it's been fun looking back at this past year. From all of us here at Fox 11, we want to wish you and your family all the best in 2024. Happy New Year.